Hi guys, welcome to the first of a few painting tutorials I'm going to put together. Um, now to give you a bit of a background to me, I worked at Games Workshop uh, many, many years ago and I've been painting toy soldiers since I was about 10, uh, which is quite a while now. Uh, over the years I've picked up a few painting techniques. None of it is complicated, all very, very straightforward. Um, and uh, although I wouldn't say that I'm the best painter out there, not by far, uh, I think my models are tabletop standard. Um, so yeah, hopefully these techniques will help people out in the future. Uh, maybe you've just started the hobby, or maybe you've been in the hobby a while, but you've you know previously just focused on the gaming element, never really um, spent too much time on the painting side of things. Uh, so I'm going to start off with my gold technique. Gold features uh, quite heavily in all of my armies, um, so it's something I've been doing uh, for a while, this particular technique. And all I've done is I've started with a base coat of Balor Brown. Um, now, uh, back in the day, this would have been snake bite leather. Uh, it's a very similar colour. Uh, and if, you, if you're interested in getting snake bite leather, um, I'll leave a link in the description. I found the company that um, used to make the Citadel paints. Um, so all I've done here, nothing, nothing complicated. Uh, just base coated it with a um, standard base brush. The only thing worth noting um, is it's worth watering the paint down a little bit. Uh, it helps prevent sort of a really heavy coat, um, but also the slightly watered down paint um, flows into the recesses a little easier. So you get a, um, it makes it a bit easier trying to cover, um, cover that first layer. Uh, now you could do this on a base coat of black. Most of my models are normally base coated black, uh, but here I've base coated it gray. Um, by the end, it, it, it won't matter what, what base coat you used. So now we're on to the second layer. Um, what I'm using is a uh, um, Getner's Gold. Is that how you pronounce it? Who knows? This one. Uh, now, a couple of things before I start. Um, firstly, using the uh, brush guard is a, a nice little trick that I've picked up on keeping these lids open. Some of them stay open very nicely. Uh, some of them need a little bit of help. Um, so yeah, that's, a, that's why my brush guards are normally covered with paint. Uh, it's because I wedged them in the back of the pot just to keep the lid open. Um, and the other thing, um, if you're completely new to painting, uh, and I'm guilty of this quite frequently, is when you're layering up your brush, uh, make sure you don't get the paint um, on the actual uh, the metal guard here. Um, you can see that I have done. I said I'm, I'm pretty guilty of it most of the time. But as your paint, uh, if you get paint up here, do wash it out as soon as possible. Um, because otherwise you can, your bristles will spray and you have to get a new brush. Uh, as I said, I'm pretty guilty of this anyway, but it's uh, worth uh, letting you guys know. Uh, so all I'm going to do here, um, I won't, won't film the whole of it, um, is just cover over the, um, I was about to say snake bite leather, but it's Balor Brown. Um, so just cover it completely with this uh, Getner's Gold. So now the um, second layer is dry. As you can see there, it's pretty golden. Um, we're gonna move on to our third layer. And for that, I'm using Rurik Armor Gold. Um, now, let's open this. Uh, this stage is just a, a dry brushing stage. Um, and I'm gonna use just a brush I've ruined earlier to do it. And you see all the bristles are all over the place. This is why you shouldn't get paint uh, all the way up the end. Um, I know you can buy um, brushes that are specifically designed for dry brushing. I've used them in the past. I find that they they uh, they get so stiff and unusable so quickly. I find just using a knackered brush um, does the trick just as well. Um, so all we're going to do here, um, we're going to put some of it down here. Now this this dry brush um, because this is the sort of like a at the first stage, you don't have to sort of, I suppose it's not technically a dry brush anymore, um, but all we're going to do is going to put lots of paint down here and we're going to hold it and very, very quickly we're going to flick the brush across. So what this is doing is it's it's picking out all the highlights very quickly. Um, again, this is, this is quite a sort of a messy stage, so if you're doing gold, do think about um, the rest of the model. Um, now, obviously, you could be carefuler, um, carefuler. You could be more careful uh, with this stage if you had areas around 
um, that you didn't want to get the gold on. Um, but I, typically I will make sure that um, I do gold or any messy stages like this before I move on to the um, the rest of the, the model. So I'm just going to quickly do the bits behind. So yeah, as you can see here, it's a slightly lighter shade of gold now, um, but there's no real definition just yet. So that's why a couple more stages to go. Now for the next stage, um, this is, I suppose, more of a conventional dry brushing stage. Uh, we're going to add some silver into the gold we've just used. Uh, now, it, it doesn't really matter what silver you use, as long as it's one of the lighter shades. Um, I'm using Runefang still here, um, before Chainmail, uh, Mithril Silver, uh, going back even further than that. It all does the same job. Um, now, what you want is probably one part gold, two parts silver. Um, so if I just move this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply... Uh, the actual paint down here um, to make sure I've got the right shade. So that's a little bit too silver. So um, normally this is easier without a camera right in front of me. There we go. That's that's a better shade. Um, so if you can if you can pick out on that, it is a slightly golden silver. Um, now, once we've got that, we, we don't want to apply this directly to the, the piece. So get a bit of kitchen towel or something like that um, and wipe away a lot of the the paint. So this is, again, this is this is more of a conventional dry brushing stage. Um, now, there's not an awful lot of paint left on the brush. Uh, and we're going to do, uh, uh, just like we did last stage, uh, very, very quickly, um, go backwards and forwards. If you need more paint, go for it. Um, and that's why I use a brush guard in the back of one of these pots because they have a habit of just closing on you uh, normally just before you want to go and use them again um, so yeah um, this is a hold the brush a little lighter than you would have done last time um, all we're really doing is picking out the the extreme edges and we can quickly go around the, the side there um, so if you can see that um, we're starting to get a little bit of um, uh, layer uh, layering effect here really uh, one for a better description um, how you can how well you can pick up on that so you can see there's a bit more of a, a silver silvered shine to it um, so yeah almost one more stage now uh, well there is one more stage and uh, we're pretty much good to go now for the final stage um, it's a case of uh, very simply adding a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Um, I think it was Devlin Mud back in the day. Um, uh, this is really my go-to paint. Uh, uh, if you leather, sort of clothing, anything, you know, if in doubt, Agrax Earthshade. Um, so I won't film uh, the whole of this because it's uh, a little bit more time consuming than just uh, dry brushing. But yeah, effectively um, just apply and make sure that the uh, the brown wash gets into all those little recesses. Um, immediately you'll see how the, the washes uh, pick out on all the detail and suddenly there's definition on, on what we've been doing. Um, so yeah, I won't, won't film all of this, um, but you, you're starting to get the idea there a little. And uh, there we have it guys. Now that the Agrax Earthshade has dried. You can see how um, it's it's all washed into the recesses. You can see how the uh, uh, maybe not in the artificial light, but certainly in daylight, how that slight silvered layer picks out a little bit of the uh, the highlights there. Again, this will probably look a little bit better in the daylight, um, but it's very very simple to do. Uh, I've spent almost no time at all this evening getting this done. And I think in the next video, I will uh, focus on the gems on the uh, the front of this crest here. Uh, show you how I do that. Again, very, very simple stuff. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you've got any suggestions on, on techniques you'd like to see me do moving forward, let me know. It might be something I can uh, take a look at or something that I've done before.
I can sort of show you how I would do it. But for the time being, thanks for watching.